Hey, how you doing, everybody? Welcome back to another Epi Quack Tuts. Last couple videos, I got a lot of requests for uh, some Autumn Hate crazy metallic basses, and I put one together last night. Super easy to make. It's awesome. Super heavy stab bass. Check it out. Um, I'm going to go over some post-processing, which is really important in this one. Um, I've got some parallel compression going on to make it really pop, make that transient really effective, which is what we want in this crazy, heavy sound. Before we get started, uh, I just dropped a new song on my SoundCloud. If you got nothing better to do, you can go check it out. It's called Vibe Check. Pretty cool, wonky rhythm, then it gets into some kind of dark dubstep shit. Pretty cool track. I don't know. If you like it, check it out. Link's in the description, and also, while you're at it, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss some crazy sound. So this is the patch right here, and it's crazy easy to make. We're just gonna be using the initial uh, saw wave that Serum opens up with, and which has pretty much become my rhythm bass template, <laughs> which is FM from B and this 4088 wavetable, uh, which is our FM source, which works perfect for getting almost any type of conventional rhythm bass, I guess, like the metallic shit and stuff like this. And then obviously we gotta spruce it up with some effects to get that whole metallic goodness going on. So let's go ahead and duplicate this patch um, and I will initialize it. I'll turn off all the post-processing, which I already said I will go over and we will start from, from blank slate. How you doing? All right, so let me open up this bitch. Very good. So uh, for oscillator A, just leave it how it starts off with. Just bring the level all the way up and then turn on FM from B. And then we'll bring that up once I turn on the uh, oscillator B, which is gonna be right about now. So, <coughs> analog, 4088, ain't done. Octave, bring it up, well, bring the octave back down. I'll show you the difference um, once we set this up more. So leave the octave at zero for now. Level all the way down, and then our wavetable position is gonna be at 171. So now that we got that, let's start bringing up our FM from B. So right now you have really crazy, like gritty type of sound, right? But once I bring up octave one. You're starting to get more of that tonal mid-range crunchy sound uh, just from bringing it up one octave. And then a couple things we have to fix here. Listen to when I hit a note. Every time I hit a note, it sounds different. That's because of these two random uh, phase position knobs. So basically every time I hit a note, the sound is starting from a different phase position each time, which is gonna give you a slightly different sound, which can be cool if that's what you want, but that's not what I want for this sound. So bring it all the way down, the random, all the way down to zero on both of these guys. We got a consistent sound, very good. All right, so let's see. Uh, so the actual FM from B uh, position is gonna be at 70%, which are pretty much on the money. So that's what we're starting with. Then we're gonna be using our low pass filter. This is what we're gonna be modulating to get that stab kind of uh, movement. So just the initial uh, MG low 12 that it opens up with. Uh, just bring the resonance up slightly. We don't, we're not going for a crazy resonant kind of sound. Just bring it up to like 21%. Uh, cutoff is gonna be at right around 330, 350 hertz, give or take, right about there. And then boost the drive quite a bit. We want this nice and juicy. And just leave the fatness all the way down, mix 100%. All right, so let's set up our uh, LFO. This is gonna be our main, our main modulator right here. Just put it in stab formation, bring the top dot all the way over there, this fucker down here, very good. And then we're gonna be using a quarter note for our speed. And uh, it's pretty cool, you can get a lot of different you know, results from switching up that speed and also raising and lowering this curve. Um, and actually turn this on envelope mode because we're, this is just gonna be a one shot kind of sound. I guess you can use an envelope too, but I don't know. The reason for that is we're not modulating the level. So if I were to turn the sound back on the trigger and hold the note down. We're getting that bleed and I don't want that. We're still getting that noise from oscillator A because the low pass filter isn't you know, filtering everything out. And But if I were to modulate the, the level, it just sounds weak. Um, it just doesn't sound powerful enough. So that's why we're just leaving the level all the way up and we're just gonna leave this on envelope mode. Hope that makes sense. So now that we've got our LFO set up, let's bring it to where it's gotta go. So first spot is gonna be our cutoff right here. And you want this modulation actually going bipolar. So on the uh, cutoff, if it's not already, uh, just alt shift or option shift, click on that parameter and it'll go bipolar. Uh, it just sounded better that way. Let's see, literally the only reason for it. So the modulation amount, you're gonna bring it up 77. There you go, already have a stab base. Uh, let's get into our effects now. First thing is gonna be our distortion. Um, if you've watched my videos for a while, you know I like diode one and diode two. Um, however, for this sound, it was a little bit too gritty. I wanted to add power, but not 
too much harmonics to where it's just, you know, too messy. Um, so hard clip was the uh, right distortion type for the job. So let's bring it all the way down the drive and we're gonna modulate that. So you're gonna bring that modulation mount almost all the way up, uh, about 78 or 80, whatever. It's about 78 right there. You can hear it just has a little bit more power to that transient and a little bit of grid as well without, like I said, being too messy. Um, so EQ I'm gonna get into later. Uh, let's go into our compressor now, turn on the multi-band and to really beef this thing up, bring the gain up a lot. About 11, 12 dB. Just squishes everything together, brings out the high end a lot more, brings out the presence, and uh, I don't know, it just always sounds good for the most part. So now let's actually get into making this thing sound metallic. So the certain effect that I'm going for can be accomplished in a lot of ways. One way um, that I didn't use in this one is through delay. So if I were to bring this delay here, turn it on link, and then turn it into milliseconds, We're starting to get that metallic kind of sound. That's just because we're essentially creating flanger by having this super short delay time. The only problem with that is you're very limited to um, whatever note you want to play because the second you hit another note, it just kind of sounds like crap because you have to match the time with the note you're hitting. And it's just not the best way to do it. So turn off the delay and we're going to be using a filter instead. And we're going to be using the flanger filter. So miscellaneous or flanges, we're going to be using flanger plus. So basically, I just messed with this cutoff until it matched the, the note I was playing. So that was around 38 hertz. Then once you bring up this resonance, obviously you're going to hear it a lot more. So bring it to around like 48%. Now you can run into the same problem um, as the as the delay as far as hitting a different note, but I find it's a lot more pronounced with the delay than the flanger filter. And you can also route note tracking to the cutoff as well, so it'll automatically match whatever you note whatever note you're playing. But for this sound, I couldn't exactly get it to match perfectly, so I just kind of left it alone. Didn't and just didn't go too crazy with the resonance, and it just worked. Sometimes that messiness can actually help. So that's the flanger, and then we're gonna get even more metallic-iness from this chorus right here. So bring the rate all the way down, uh, mix, bring the mix all the way up for now, and then low pace filter, bring it all the way up. And then we're just gonna really be messing with the depth and the feedback, so let's go ahead and do that. So bring the feedback up quite a bit, about like 55, 56%. We get that nice metallic tail to it, that springiness, springness, I don't know, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to call it. So the same thing, I just messed with the depth until it sounded right. So around 8.9 milliseconds was that sweet spot. Gave a nice metallic boxiness without having too much of a tail. So then just back off the mix to around like 40, 40, 45%. So this EQ right here, I didn't actually add this EQ in until I had all the post-processing done. Essentially, the post-processing just, you know, beefed it up so much, made it a lot more powerful, and then I boosted a certain frequency range that just brought out the metallic atmosphere even more. So that's what I'm going to do in this video as well. I'm going to add this EQ towards the end. So I'll leave it off for now. And then there's one more modulation in Serum that we're going to do, and then we're going to be modulating this wavetable position for oscillator B, which really changes the sound a lot. So bring LFO one, wavetable position, drag that bitch down, minus 70. And it sounds like that. So without that modulation, you have that and then with it, it just sounds so much better. It actually complements the metallic vibe of this sound e even more, um, just that little just that little modulation right there brings it all together. So I believe that's gonna be it for Serum. You can, I do have a macro set up to the cutoff. Um, so if you do wanna change the cutoff a little bit for the flanger, you can. Um, so, so just bring the macro over here to the cutoff and bring it up six. 
and then I actually have it up a little bit. Uh, you can bring the macro up 4%, and that's exactly how I have it right now. So that's what you should have coming outside of Serum, which already sounds absolutely awesome, but not good enough. I did forget one thing, actually. Um, for the flanger filter, just bring the mix to like 60%. That sounds better. All right, very good. So our EQ here. Um, so first thing I did was I just took out all the sub frequencies and then a little bit of those like real lows. Whenever you put this in a project, you're gonna layer a sub under underneath it anyway. So you don't need that. You don't need that in there. And then it just felt a little too boxy around this area. So I took that out. That right there. Like I said, it just cleaned it up. It just sounded a little bit more clean. And as you can see here, we are clipping by two and a half dB. So I have this boosted, but we're actually gonna bring this down too. Um, so you have proper gain staging here. Basically you want it to be peaking as high as possible before it starts to clip. And that's through each plugin. If you're a little over, not a big deal. So for Serum, let's see. We could probably bring that down a little bit. About right there, that's good. And then that should take care of our clipping in the EQ. Right on the money. That's how you get your sounds to sound nice and loud and nice and, you know, nice and full. Pretty much is one of the very first steps of the mix down process, but it's a very important one. So on the Serum FX, so without Serum FX, we have this. And then with it. Might sound a little bit weaker, but that's because um, we took out a lot of the low end with this one. Um, and that's because the OTT and the fat effects, our distortion is going to bring those back in. And so don't worry about it for now. Um, the main thing here is the reverb filter. So pretty much just like every other effect, I just messed with the cutoff and the mix and the resonance until everything sounded nice, until everything sounded right, until it sounded cool. I, w I wasn't going for a crazy reverb filter kind of sound, just something to bring out the atmosphere a little bit more in the sound, you know, the overall metallic tone. So if I were to turn the EQ off for now and just bring the mix all the way up, You can hear right that area right there, that sounded perfect for me. That definitely was gonna complement the overall metallic vibe of this sound very well. Has a very factory kind of feel to it. So I just got that, uh, and then I just backed off the mix. Just so, just so there was a little bit of it. Um, so the actual cutoff is gonna be 36 hertz, bring up the residence a lot, 57% and then the mix around 30%, or whatever sounds good to you. And I definitely recommend messing with this cutoff yourself to try to get some different sounds, make it sound even cooler, do whatever you want. Um, definitely make this sound your own. There's a lot you can do with this sound. So then we got our EQ over here. Basically, this is just cutting out more of the low end, cleaning it up a bit. It's a little bit of a, it's a, little bit of a muddy sound down there. And then I just boosted some high frequencies just to bring out the presence a bit more. Um, I just figured I already got Serum FX open, so instead of opening another EQ, I'll just do it right here. So. You can bring down Serum's Master a little bit because we are clipping a bit in the like 13. Bring it up one more. All right, that's good. So on the left, just open up your high pass right here, the low cut filter. And then our frequency is going to be at 216 hertz. And I bring your cue down a lot because we don't want any peaks over there. We don't want to boost any of this low or low mids. We just want to, uh, you know, cut them out. So then, like I said, on the right here, I just boosted around, uh, around 8200, 8250 hertz. Just sounded right. So bring that up by like 60 B or yeah, about 60 B. All right, so that's Serum FX. Then of course, OTT, I try not to, but it just sounds too good to not use. So for sound design, it just sounds amazing. <laughs> uh, so the depth, uh, just 29%, uh, didn't touch the output gain. I just boosted the high as a tad bit and that's it. You could actually bring the gain down a little bit because we are still clipping. So bring it down by like one. That's fine. So then we have Fat Effects. This is growing into my favorite distortion plugin. It's a native uh, plugin with Logic. It used to be Camel Fat. It is now Apple Fat. And this is what it is. It's awesome. One of my favorite things is this bass enhancer. It just brings a lot of warmth, as you can see here, uh, to the to the low end. And it just always sounds nice. It's got a compressor built in. Um, distortion, obviously. It's a modulation. It's got an XY pad for the filter. It's awesome. So without it, it's going to sound like this. And then with it, 
it just completely brings the sound to life. Um, so the way I have it set up, it's just the initial default setting that it opens up with, but I did add the exciter distortion type, brought that up by 16%. That just kind of, you know, bring out that presence even more, bring out that high end. Soft saturation, it doesn't need any kind of crazy grit, you know, we don't need any kind of diode 2, diode 1 kind of distortion type. Um, I just want to beef it up a little bit, so soft saturation, about 25%. And then this very drive, I don't know what the hell that means, but I brought it up by 6% and it sounded good. And this sound is just sounding absolutely nuts. Let's see, the compressor and the bass enhancer settings, that's just the, the default settings it opens up with. Um, you can, these are the settings right there. It definitely helps, especially that compressor. A little bit beefier. And then uh, that's about it. And I brought the output gain up all the way. So now let's get into our um, parallel compression and some reverb. So I added some room reverb on a separate bus. So that way we have the original sound, which is nice and dry. And then we're just letting some of that reverb bleed in. So um, in Logic, you can just right here, send, send it out to a bus. I have bus one. That's got one of my favorite reverb plugins, Valhalla Reverb or Valhalla Room. Um, just really nice reverb plugin. Sounds awesome. These are the settings for that. Really short. The decay time is only 0.43 seconds. And then I have the pre-delay, pretty long, 25 milliseconds. So it's gonna allow that sound to play. And then the reverb is kind of gonna, it's gonna kick in. You know, it's nice and short. It also complements that, you know, metallicness um, as well. Then I also have the reverb sidechain. So I just have a compressor here. So basically it's sidechained to the actual sound that, you know, that we're playing in Serum. So that sound's gonna hit. The reverb's gonna pretty much cut out pretty heavy down about negative 12 dB, and then it's gonna come back once the sound um, goes away. And I just left the default attack and release settings. It just sounded fine. So it's gonna let you get the power of that sound first without drowning it in reverb, and then the reverb is gonna creep in. So that is the reverb. And now we have our parallel compression to really beef it up even more. Supercharger is the compressor I used for that. This is a really great compressor for um, parallel compression. As you can see, it's just a parallel slam preset. All I did was just mess with the mix a little bit and the uh, input and output. So let's go ahead and turn it off. This is what it's gonna sound like without it. Then with it. It just really adds punch to that transient. Like a lot. <laughs> so like I said, it's just a parallel slam preset if you have supercharger. Basically, I just have it compressed to the to ever living hell, and it's just on a bus, so we're not actually putting it on the actual sound. We're just bleeding it in through a send. So I have that on my second bus, and then the send amount is at around minus three, and then the fader is down two. So pretty much, you just want to mess with these with these settings, the fader and the send amount, until it sounds you know until all your levels are right. You're not clipping too much. You can actually bring this up a little bit. The punch and the dirt are on. I'm pretty sure that's just messing with the attack and release settings to make it more, you know, slappy. And that's about it. So guys, that is the sound. It is freaking awesome. Download link is going to be in the description as always. Um, if you like the sound, like I said, please hit that subscribe button. Your boy's trying to hit 10,000 subs by the end of the uh, decade. Um, so thank you for that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.